My name is Mike Hideous. I'm an artist, a photographer, and an author. In 1988, I created a rock band called The Empire Hideous, and I released several albums and performed around the country. This is a variety podcast in which Professor Z and I extract details from interesting daily headlines to offer our listeners the inevitable truth. You're listening to Finding the Truth with Mike Hideous. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Finding the Truth with me, your host, Mike Hideous. Uh, Today is the 18th of March, 2024. We have been trying to bring you um, an interview every every couple of days, not days, but every other week or so within each month. And uh, I'm very happy and very pleased to say that we have a, a, a band uh, two guys from a band that uh, I've, I've known about for about three years or so. They are from Florida, or based out, I should say based out of Florida, northern Florida. And uh, we're going to do an interview with these two guys um, who I have known and are very good guys. They're, they're actually coming up to New Jersey to do a couple of, well, either one gig at least, uh, in Parsippany for the, um, I believe it's the Dark Force uh, convention, but we'll get into that as I interview him. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Tom Knorr, who is the entrepreneur of the show, of the uh, band, and drummer Tyler Fleming. So guys, come on. Hello, Mike, and everyone else that's watching and listening. Hello, Mike. Thanks for having us. Hello, gentlemen. Thank, yeah, thank you for coming yeah, on. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to this interview. I'm sure we're going to have a good time. Um, so why don't you start by telling everybody a little bit about the history of the band, how you got started, Tom, uh, you know, how things developed and, uh, what the band is all about. Why don't you start with that? Yeah. So 2016, I I kind of put this thing together, uh, or started putting it together. So by 2017, I think uh, I started doing the first album for it. It was really just, um, kind of a, a one-off thing that I was after or going forward to see if there was a market for anything that could be within that gothy or doom uh, type music that that type of negative uh, wrote and, and kind of left behind. I mean, a lot of when I was coming up, um, other bands I was in, I was always being compared. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to be able to do anything else. So we'll give this a whirl. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did not expect it to be popular or even cared about. Um, I honestly expected to... Uh, to get ripped apart for it, but actually uh, it went the other direction. So I was very surprised. And I remember very in the early stages, a lot of people saying, Hey, are you guys on tour? When are you playing here? When are you playing here? I said, well, fuck, I don't even have a band together. Um, so I started. And what year was that? What that year was, was that? 2017. So you didn't even have a band. No, it was just me, man. I, I did it all myself just to see what would happen. Um, but yeah. And then from there, like uh, we just kind of built and grown and, uh, and just learn things along the way, see what, you know, what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, uh, right. how everything works in operation with the uh, audio engineering. That's like so, every other. So how, how long until you came up with the idea to do a band till you actually got music, musicians to, to play in the band? So I uh, did the first album, I, I want to say by the beginning, that released in like October of 2017. So I think by the new year. For 2018, I started uh, making some phone calls to see if anybody might be interested. And um, I think we spent about six months getting prepared for the first show. And uh, I think September of 2018, we played the first show. And did you did you do any music before the concept of October Nor? Uh, yeah, uh, I was in a couple other bands just you know, in the early 2000s uh, coming up. Uh, I remember back in my teenage years, late 90s, uh, I was messing around with some like black metal and uh, industrial uh, with a buddy of mine, but it was more of a project scenario, but, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't really until 2004, uh, that we actually had a band together, uh, and started doing some gigs. Uh, but that, I think that lasted for like a year. So from that moment on, it was basically me just playing my own shit and you know, playing guitar and then 
Yeah, do just doing whatever. And so by 2018, you started October Nor. Yeah, uh, six, 2016, I started coming up with the idea. And My so apologies, right? Yeah. 2016, so you started the October Nor at that point. Yeah. And when you started writing the music, did you uh, – I mean, I'm not going to hide it. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of people who you know as well that that think that October Nor is, I'm not going to say a reincarnation, but definitely in the veins of a band like Typo Negative. Right. Yeah. Well, and that was so it was weird because like with the first album, I was like, okay, how do I spell it out for people? Because I've always been used to like you know people hear things and they might hear things differently. So I was like, well, let me make it very direct and to the point. Just you know, capitalize off of it. So I remember that, you know, half the album had influences from different typo songs. And I just kind of reworked, you know, some words or lyrics and, and uh, the way things kind of progressed, I guess, through the song. And, uh, and then, you know, the other half was original content. So I was just kind of trying to blend it. And I don't know, man, I was just messing with things just to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. And what was the reaction from people? Uh, they loved it. They were like, holy oh, shit, this good. is amazing. So and I, I started getting more and more uh, people hitting me up. And uh, so I was doing a lot of the footwork, you know, just kind of sharing it out and saying, hey, you know, what, let me know what you think, blah, blah, blah. And um, it just started getting more and more opportunities. So uh, I think uh, Primordial Radio out of um, Scotland or the UK, they uh, they picked us up and started playing us on their show. And uh, the like the PR lady that from there is the one who found it and uh, just loved it. So it just started gaining and gaining I, I was really surprised do you do you, um some people when when they have a band that either sounds like mm -hmm. another band or even follows in the footstep mm -hmm. of another band and in this case let's just say a popular band mm -hmm. did you uh did you find it to be complimentive or did you find it to be uh, a hindrance did like you know sometimes people don't like being a they don't like being associated with uh, with another band yeah it was it was weird like i mean I, to a degree there are compliments to it but i get sick of hearing like the, the typo thing right you know back in the early ages sure and you know that was fine it's that's kind of you know hey we're, this is what we're giving you this is what we're showing you this is what could be um, but then up until the point where we are now, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm ripping off things from other fucking songs just to, just to play with it and see if anybody's going to notice it or pick up on it. You know, like Def Leppard's, uh, have you ever needed someone so bad? We used in the third album and just kind of slow it down or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, little <laughs> things like that. Um, and, but it's still, all they hear is fucking typo negative. I'm like, man, there's so much more going on because of the. The, the different influences, like you know, Cradle of Filth was a huge influence um, in a lot of the, the keyboard work and stuff that I do or, or try to work with. But there's so much going on um, just from different mu musical categories. It's like I remember doing like the we wanted to do like a Misfit style song that, that we could play into it, which was uh, Effigy. Um, or we had like the Goosebumps theme song fucking riff in, in one of the... <laughs> cradle of the monster song like just random <laughs> shit we'd fuck with that's interesting uh yeah and um i, I just i have a lot of fun with me because i like I like taking different oh, instruments good. and not really playing into the formality of what that instrument's supposed to do it's like nah, i'm gonna All take right, so, it and, yep go ahead i'm, I'm sorry no, i was I'm just saying i was gonna take it and I... fucking murder it and, and see what kind of sounds or other sounds you could get <laughs> so before i get into what's currently happening just tell me how many efforts did you release until your latest project um well we had the first album which was uh the haunting and the powerful that was 2017 in 2019 we did the album 13 which was more to break off into the our own territory with but a lot of the fan base was still wanting you know some of those top typo nod moments um okay. so we i think we did you know one or two songs there was one song uh what was it fucking her dark embrace actually was written parallel to uh typos haunted and i was doing it to try and stir up the the typo fan base because a lot of people you sh you share something with them and they're like yeah i'll check it out and then they don't fucking do anything so i was like all right i need to get them chattering and he, so i did this song and i released and it pissed them all off i was like yes all right now now we got some fucking people looking into it <laughs> got, got your attention yeah yeah so uh it, so it so, worked. so again, though, but, but what, what, how many projects did you put out up until we are yeah. at, at the most recent release between? 
So there's 14 well, albums you, right you now. Okay, so you mentioned the first two, yeah. right? And then okay. Fate, Wine, and Wisteria, which is the third album. That was 2021. That's the third album. Yeah, and then now we have Letters to Existence, which is the fourth album. But in between... Now, folks. Yeah. I, I just want to show everybody. So, folks. Oh, yeah, there you go. This is, this is the album, all right? It's, it's Fate, Wine, and Wisteria. Now, Tom Nor was nice enough to send this to me, but he did not send me the most recent... <laughs> <laughs> release so i can't even promote the fucking album because i don't have it yeah i'll send it to you <laughs> hey mike Anywho. open up that cd show, show show we're gonna show them the little magic trick i included with what, this album what, what am i showing you all what right so doing? so the actual cd itself grab that the physical combat oh, okay. disc oh, oh i think i see it already <laughs> now put your finger through the middle hole oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we did a uh, an actual uh <laughs> vagina on the cd turn it upside down mike i kind of there you go what like that it's kind of yeah it's kind of hidden like that yeah there you go <laughs> no it's this way isn't it oh that way yeah i mean if you like it doggy style that's that's fine too <laughs> I, you know, you, you didn't even have to point that out to me because I saw that the first day I pulled the CD out. I was like, look, a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the most recent album out right now is by October Nor is Letters to Existence. Did I say it right? That's correct. Okay. I wouldn't know because I don't have the fucking CD in front of me. <laughs> you will. But <laughs> so, uh. I'm assuming all your records are independently released, are they not? Uh, yes, all independent. You, okay, so you're current. Are you currently looking for a record label, or not? We, and the reason I ask this question is because we are now in in an age in which um, you don't necessarily need a record label. I mean, you do if you really want to do a big tour, right? And 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 be a Tyler Swift kind of person. But so many rock bands have gone the way of do you know diy and i i think that's important because i mean the big thing i remember was when the labels started uh filing bankruptcy and closing out the major ones i was like this is bad this is really bad because everything else underneath is is crumbling too it's a domino effect mm -hmm. um yeah. i don't have a problem finding a label if the contract works for us of um, course we've had offers before and we've essentially turned them all down. That was just, there wasn't anything there that was really going to benefit anyone. And a lot of what I hear from uh, your smaller bands that are on labels these days is they're getting screwed. It's mostly. Well, yeah. It, 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 you know, not that I'm going to toot on my own horn, but mm -hmm. when I was doing music, one of the, the big things, well, when I first started, the, the big thing for me was I got to get a record deal. I got to get a record mm -hmm. deal. But as time went by, I realized that, the only good a record label offers a band is when they uh, hook them up for a tour. Yeah. Because um, ultimately, for every every CD you sell, you're only getting like three to five cents yeah. per CD. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be lucky to get that, honestly, on a label. Right. Uh, it, it's all about touring that's these right. days. That's right. Uh, there is other merchandise that you can make money on provided you own mm -hmm. rights to your own merchandising right. but let's not get into that so here we are now you got a new album out you've got new band band members right so we've got tyler who's sitting there patiently waiting to speak so we got tyler who is the drummer yep. and tyler when did you come in i officially came in new year's eve of 2021 so i guess I, what would that be the day before New Year's Eve of 21. So the okay. last day. Of, so about two years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And those two and a half years have flown by. I can't believe it's been that long already. Wow. Like time flies, huh? Yeah. It's been a ride. I, I came in the band when, <clears throat> when they were, they were remastering the first album. So the first album that you hear online is, is me. So it was a, Tom hated the way the first album sounded, so he brought me in, and I actually, uh, it was a good time. I mean, I don't know. I, I never thought that this band, joining the band, would be where we are now. 
And how did how did that happen? How, like, did did uh, Tom contact you? Did like how did you find out about October Noir? Well, I was actually uh, I actually played a show with October Noir, and I was in a different band, and I, I heard them, and I I wasn't a big fan of their drummer at the time. Nothing against him personally, just as nothing. Who was that? Uh, just just the way that who, uh, the way that the band sounded on on. Uh, on album as opposed to live. I just let Tom know. I was like, Hey man, if, if, if anything ever happens and you need a drummer, I'm your guy because I've always nice. been, you know, I've always back in my younger days, I played thrash metal and just like just really hardcore and thrash. And that, that was never really where my heart was. So I was like, man, this, where was your heart, Tyler? Where was your heart? It was in the goth rock scene. It was, Playing this kind of really? music. Is that so? Because I got to tell you, I never think, I never thought you would be into a goth style of music. I honestly, I just, you, I look at you and I think heavy metal. Yeah. Well, and everybody does. Um, but that's, so it's, it's fun to play heavy metal, but I was always listening to, to goth rock. So <laughs> oh, it's, it's fun yeah. to play. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot more cowboy. fun. As a musician, it's a lot more fun playing heavy metal, right? I mean, you get to do more, you get to shine more. But to be a part gotcha. of this band has been the biggest achievement in my musical career, just because I get to, well, that's get to great. be a part of the writing of, I'm telling you, man, these songs and this music that we do, I'm such a fan of it. And I love that's so much. Great. I love so much to make it and... Oh, you know, you know, all the like the nasty, like the the back and forth behind the scenes when you're making an album. I love all that. So this has been a That's huge. Wonderful. So so Tom, I'm sorry to cut you off, Tyler. But Tom, when you hear something like this and you meet a musician who joins up in the band, I'm sure I'm sure it probably gives you really a good feeling knowing that here's a guy who's now going to work with you and he's he's, you know, into the music like that's got to feel good right uh yeah uh well, the funny story you know when i first met tyler he was starstruck seeing me because i came off the stage we still had the old lineup <laughs> and he was like is that I, 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 is that true tyler yeah yeah because, because i was a fan <laughs> of, i was a fan of the music and i was like wow man there's the, here's somebody that gets it in our in our small little scene that we have yeah so when i approached him he was like i i don't know what to say <laughs> I was like, just fucking talk, man. I was like, <laughs> you know. now, now, Tyler, you're you're from. Uh, uh, don't tell me, you are from Alabama. Yeah, from Mobile, Alabama. Okay, and uh, how did again? You, you mentioned that you saw the band. Did you see them in Florida, or did you see them in your state? <clears throat> no, they were actually they were actually playing a show with my band at the time in Mobile. Uh, so okay. it, and it was an all day festival. So I was okay. kind of shocked that they were there. Nice. But these are back in the old days. The, the old very, days, at the, least the at least three, three years, years ago, ago, right? <laughs> it's all way back three years ago. The days of China virus. Yeah. <laughs> <Those days. laughs> so, uh, all right. So here we are. Now, I, I got to tell you, there's one thing that I'm very impressed about with October Noor. And that is how many music videos you've put out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to commend you that that's really great. I don't think I was able to get out one. Um, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm bullshitting, but <laughs> I only had one real music video out up until 2021. Well, yeah, but Mike, if you look at your time, where you, the timeline that you came up in, um, you, you didn't have the technology that you have today. Like yes, I'll tell true. you right now, all of our music videos up to date are all shot on the iPhone. Get the hell out of dead here. ass serious. That's amazing. Dead, dead ass serious. <laughs> um, That's really amazing. Yeah, but it, you know, you just kind of go into it with a little bit of knowledge of, of film work, and I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. And, and who's the one who does all the direction, production, and or filming? Do you hire people for that, or do you do it yourself? I do it. 
Really? Yep. Who, who? So I've seen the videos. Yep. Who's who's shooting it? So normally, if if I'm in the scene at all, I I'll put the camera into somebody's hands and I'll just say, "Hey, do shoot this way, be at this angle, blah blah blah." And uh, it, yeah, it tends to work out. And when you're shooting other musicians, you do yep. it. Boy, you and I have a lot in common when it comes to that <laughs> yeah. uh, that notion because like I've it. done the same thing for videos that I've done in the past. It saves a whole lot of money. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> and I got to tell you, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to reveal the secret. But uh, what's the name of the song with all the grass that you're in? Oh, uh, Forever Haunt. Yeah, I know the secret behind that. Oh, oh, t- where it was sh- where it was shot? Yeah, where was it at? Mm-hmm. You want me to tell yeah, yeah. everybody? It was in your backyard. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I knew it. It was so funny because Doug and Tyler, they come outside. They're like, Tyler's like, we're shooting this in your backyard. I was like, yes, just trust the process. Can't tell. Yep. Can't, can't tell. tell at all because I, I, I looked at, I love that video. And as well as I like that song. Yep. And I watched that. And then after, because you sent me the link for it. Mm-hmm. And I watched it. And after I watched, I was like, damn, that's really good. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, we shot that in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's amazing. Like, all, so all the post effects, you know, in, in the after work that goes into it. Yeah. That's where the magic yeah. happens to cover it all up. That's great. And Tyler, you're in that video, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a hell of a time yeah. for me. <laughs> Blinded by the light. Oh, He's man. bitching the whole time. The fucking sun's in my eyes. Oh, man. Oh. Like, that video, it was muddy. <laughs> It was muddy out there, and I got my, I've got all my drums set up, and I've got my hi hat, oh, and it's leaning to it's the like side, sinking. <laughs> Everything is sinking, and I, I had to mm. stick a pizza box up under my hi hat stand. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my god! The things you see, people, the things musicians yeah. do behind <laughs> the scenes. Shooting a video in the backyard, using a yep. pizza box to hold up your hi hat. I mean, these are things that nobody would have no, known. No. Like you, like when I watched that video, I'm like, "Wow, this is a professional band. They're really, really got it." And I'm like, "Backyard, <laughs> we don't got it. We just got everybody fooled." At, yeah, and pizza box. I'm you're, like, "Okay, you're never the mind." Back end of all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, really and the great though. Part, it, the worst part was I, I've got a 24 inch ride symbol, which is just like a big, huge gong, basically. And the light, and right. the, when we were shooting my scene, the light was bouncing off the ride symbol into my face. Oh, well, I had I had the guitar player behind me with an umbrella to, to shoot no the light way. because I could not keep my eyes open; it was so bright. But it was tough out. being a musician, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's great. It it is it is it, the it, most stressful shit of my life. God damn <laughs> prima donnas. <laughs> you know, you got a point, Tyler. Um music doing it yourself, it's not easy. And there's a lot of sacrifice that musicians and I've told Tom this as well as you a hundred, two hundred times. There's a lot that you have to sacrifice in order to get to that level where people can recognize you excuse me and really see the band for what it is yeah that's and the, i'll, the I'll tell you point. i've been watching you guys tom particularly because i've known him longer yeah. uh and and watching you guys how you've developed and i'm first of all tom i'm so glad you got a guy like tyler oh me too man he, he, he's really dedicated and he loves he loves the band now, before I go any further, why don't you talk about the other musicians in the band? We give them some credit. Yeah, we got uh, Doug. Doug's been with us since uh, right after the second album released. And Doug plays what, rhythm guitar or lead guitar? Uh, he or is, well, he was initially on uh, guitar. He was doing leads and, in, in, well, the whole guitar work. Uh, and then he just recently moved to keyboards uh, because it's impossible to find a keyboard player, A, who wants to do this kind of music, and B, it, just anyone that plays keyboards. <laughs> um, so he's he's only he's doing just keyboards or, yeah, yeah. or guitar so, and keyboards. Nope, he's he's on keyboards, just keyboards now. I did not realize yep. that. And then we brought in uh, Trey, which he he came in towards the last leg of finishing up the the newest album. Um, and he's on guitar. Yeah, he's on guitar now. Okay, and where'd you find these guys from? 
So, I know you've been with Doug for a long time. Yeah, so uh, right after our original guitar player and keyboard player quit, uh, we put out a message, and I think within three hours, uh, Doug had, had hit us up and said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm interested, and I've got a keyboard player with me named Justin. And uh, so, that yeah, we said, hey, we'll come over, we'll talk about it, and uh, we'll see what you guys can do, and we'll figure out if it's a fit. So, yeah, they came over, and it was pretty much immediate. It's like, yeah. We're good to go. <laughs> and are those guys from Florida as well? Yeah. 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 Okay. Who's that? That's, that's Doug. Oh, tell him to pop in. Pop, pop in. in. You come answer these goddamn questions, Doug. Right. <laughs> Is Trey there too? No. He, he actually lives in Alabama as well. Oh, okay. Now Tom Didn't and I are roommates. Hello, Doug. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How about you? Um, I'm hanging in there. I'm, I think this I'm is talking the first time to you. We've talked. It probably is. I'm talking to these bozos here. <laughs> well, you should probably hang around in case uh, Tom gets a uh, stage fright. You can answer AKA some questions. AKA a boner. <laughs> Tom only gets stage you wanna... fright when we talk to Tara Van Flower. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, would you like to say anything while you're uh, while you're on our exciting show? Uh, how long you been in the band? You said uh, what, four or five years? Uh, yeah, something like that. It's going on five years. Five years? Yeah, I, yeah. I joined actually a couple of weeks before the second album dropped. Um, okay. So the night that we met, I was actually filling in for another band uh, called Dark Con of Man in the area. Come a little, come a little closer to the mic. <laughs> there, uh, there you go. I was filling in for another band called Dark Con of Man in the area. Right. And. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I saw that. Yeah, that was uh, that was the night I met the guys um, in the first incarnation of the band. And uh, the very next day, um, Danny put out a message saying that uh, they were looking for a guitar player and a keyboard player. It was like, was okay. Danny the drummer? Was Danny the drummer mm. at the time? Oh God! I, I, for some reason, you I thought his name him, was. Mike. Yeah, you know, for some reason, I was going to say I thought he was uh, uh, his name was Scott, but you're right, it was Danny. Um, <laughs> That's what we're calling him. So from yes. Now on. I, I remember him. Uh, anyway, uh, Doug, real quick. So um, let me ask you, what made you want to switch solely to keyboards? Because I know you play fantastic guitar. What, uh, what prompted you to go to that pussy uh, instrument? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, well, I'm, kidding. <laughs> well, um, I'm totally teasing your ass. Just... Well, I mean, okay. my reasoning for going to keyboards is much like the very reason I joined the band in the first place. It was to expand my musical horizons. I had never Good. played in a band that played this kind of music before, and I wasn't super familiar with it. So when we got to the point where we needed a keyboard player and we couldn't find anyone, I was like, this is a musical skill that I would like to develop. And there is no better opportunity for me to do that and put it to good use than doing that for the band. And, and, and now you just said that you weren't used to that playing that type of music. What kind of music were you into before you got into October Noir? Uh, most recently before getting into uh, October Noir, I was in a death metal band. Uh, played a lot of uh, progressive metal, fusion, fusion jazz, you know. Oh, oh, so you were in a prog band, a prog rock band. Well, um, the band I was in was more of like a death metal band. It had some prog influences, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was, it was more straight up death metal. Okay. And do you like this band better than doing like a, a death metal um, or prog metal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Answer the question, yes. There's pros and cons. <laughs> um, of guitar, course, what the anything. guitar playing itself isn't quite as fun, but there's a lot more in the production when you're working with uh, top-notch people like Tyler and Tom. Good. Um, and, you know, that's what I was looking for out of a band at the time. It's like, I'm tired of wasting my time. I want to deal with people that are really, that really want this. Right. And, and if I may ask, are you self-taught or did you learn music uh, through a teacher or school? Well, um, I did take some lessons, um, but I'm mostly self-taught. Cool. All right. I mean, and what's it like working with these bozos? <laughs> Terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Um, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, 
period. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for me to uh, do a lot of the things I otherwise wouldn't be able to do with a band that wasn't as serious. Cool. Like uh, building the uh, light show platform that we've got, the uh, silent stage rig, um, working on the music videos. So you do all that? Uh, I mean, aside from the music videos, you do a lot of the programming on stage for the lights and the, and the stage. Well, I didn't the do the programming, itself. but I set up the platform and uh, the equipment. I'm basically um, keyboard slash sound guy. I was going to say it's keyboard slash road crew. Yeah. So <laughs> um, when Un- I unpaid too, <laughs> unpaid. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming out of the uh, the Air Force, um, I was in the Air Force. I dealt dealt a lot with theater deployable communications. So I was like, how can I get the most bang out of my buck for the computer systems that I'm dealing with, and uh, like uh, save some money on having to. Uh, have a crew to get the kind of impact that we want. So it's like, okay, that, that was my mission is trying to figure that out. That's really cool. And may I say, uh, thank you very much for your service in the military to our country. Thank you for your uh, cervix. I, Doug. <laughs> thank you for your cervix as well, but thank you very much. I, I appreciate all your input tonight and being part of this little, uh, this little powwow that we're having. Thank mm-hmm. you, Doug. I, I really appreciate it. On that note, um, I did want to ask, finish asking Tyler. So you were talking about your interest in goth music and gothic rock music. And what are you into? Like, what were you into? Like, if you had to name a couple bands, what were you into? Well, it's not, it's not goth inclusive, but, um, well, you mentioned, you mentioned you were into kind of the gothic yeah. stuff. So, uh, yeah. like, well, what? I mean, I, I've always liked, um, uh, Music like from the Cure, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Morrissey. I know he's controversial. Oh no, kidding! And uh, even the Smiths and the Cure, which I already said. Um, <laughs> but even even going like to uh, goth is a is a pretty vague genre these days. Um, it is. I was into big bands like uh, him and the Sixty Nine Eyes, which which that kind of leads into goth rock, which. Right. Um, I don't know how much of a goth rocker you are, Mike, but oh, but uh, I I hate that stuff. Oh shit! <laughs> you know, bands like uh, him and Sun Eyes and Lacrimis for Fundery and uh, Sharon and Poison Black just that's where that's where my sweet spot always was. I mean, you know the the music doesn't have to be super technical. It's about what you're getting lyrically and emotionally. Um, some of the some of the songs that have connected most to me didn't have a lot of guitar shredding. There wasn't a lot of um, heavy drums, uh, heavy, you know, heavy uh, solos and stuff. It's just very straightforward. Do you, do you prefer that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And Tom, would, what about I would what about you, Tom? To you... The Cure than Slayer all day long. Uh, it's just. It and, more. and Tom, what about you? Do, you? do you prefer a band that doesn't do like a lot of solos and, and stuff? That, yeah. That sort of a lot of times when I hear bands, you know, and they're, they're wanting to shred, it's like they're trying too hard. Um, I like bands with natural vocals, first of all. Um, it can have some mix of more aggressive stuff, but I've never been like big on the screaming and, and growling. Like I always tell people, if, if I see somebody on stage start making butthole lips, I'm done. I'm out. So fair enough. Um, yeah, melody and uh, good songwriting, uh, you know, more ethereal stuff in a lot of ways too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah the 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 softer side. For those of you who don't know, and most of you probably don't, um, Tom and I were actually in a project together mm-hmm. from about early 2020 until about just about mid 2021. The name of the project was called Momento Morte, um, and it sunk like a battleship that was in World War II. Um, <laughs> it's because there was Nazis on board. <laughs> from that project, um, Tom and I remained in contact with each other. We remained friends as well as uh, 
uh, talking about the possibility of doing th things in the future musically. So uh, we had, so if you go to MikeHideous.com on the first page, I think it's the first page, there's a download, a free download of two, so, two demos, I would call them, that we had put out. They, I'll be first to admit it, guys, they sound terrible. Um, and that's because what we had to work with was absolute shite. Um, we were given a pre-recorded, um, already mixed uh, song in which we were supposed to uh, make better by adding vocals and any other guitar or any other thing like that. And then poor Tom was set to master it which was really impossible to do considering yeah. all the instruments were, and if you know anything about mixing music or, uh, 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 for a band or anything, whether rock and roll, whatever, when you mix a real song, you're doing track by track by track. And in this case, all we had to work with was a, 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 a full complete song, instrumental song, drums. I believe there were keyboards guitar bass no, it was well there, yeah there was some keyboards were, were there yeah there was especially yeah. in uh, uh between us yeah. anywho yeah, between us, yeah. um so we get this pre-recorded song and we're we were supposed to work with it now mind you this was not the 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 fault of tom or myself or anybody else we're not even going to mention the person who was involved so what i'm getting at is this we had this this recording to work with that we had to make as good as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I did vocals for it. We did two songs. So one song was called at the time it was called between us. The other song we did was blood, uh, blood runs, blood, cold. Ru blood runs cold. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the lyrics for these songs. I gave them titles and, um, eventually Tom mixed what he could. And then they were released for free on my website mm -hmm. as free downloads. Okay, fast forward to now. So October Noir has a new single coming out, which is entitled The Ages, which is actually the same song I just mentioned earlier called Between Us. Um, so it is being released by Tom's band, I, yours truly, am the vocalist on that single. Now, I want you to know, I am not here self-promoting this <laughs> single. Even though I'm singing on it, and I do a damn good job, I must admit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike, if you want to know a funny story, I was actually, do you remember when I approached you about trying to put that song on the new album? For letters? Right. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. I'll, I'll see you. And then I recorded the vocals and... I was like, no, nah, Mike's is better. Get these out of you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that. No, I like will you did, say this, yeah, and phenomenal. I think you're, I think you will agree with me when I say that song really, it really has something. There is a, a it, it does. It it has something, right? Yeah. And uh, well, that was why I I'm like. Not gonna, well, well, go go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, all I'm just going to say is that I'm not I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but and, and, you know, someday, folks, you may hear the real story. But at this point right now, neither Tom nor myself want to give any credit to a certain person who was involved in that project for very good reason. Nevertheless, the song itself, and I hate to toot my own horn here, but the song itself, when it was completed, sounded wonderful, as shitty as the recording was. But now we've changed the name to The Ages and Tom's band is releasing it as a single, which is coming out when? Spring? Yeah. yeah. Or it is spring now, but yeah. in a, a couple of months or so or a couple. Yeah, um, I'm, I was initially shooting for April 1st, um, mm -hmm. but I put it in the hands of a pretty big mixing guy who's then putting it in the hands of a big mastering guy. Oh, that's right. And we talked are, about that. Yeah, super industry people. So I'm hoping we're going to get a, a good result from it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear. Now, uh, let me explain this. So when Tom initially approached me about uh, releasing this, 
he had said that they were going to re-record the song instrumentally and then use the vocals from the initial demo which i had recorded for them um and then use that for uh the the release itself as well and i hate to toot my own horn again they're also using my art on the cover now here's what i've got to ask you is the is this single and actually like a cd or or or, or is this like a physical cd or just a download no it's right now it's just a download um going into the territory of actually bring it as a cd is on the table as well well what if you do like another album you put it on there like as a oh a yeah we could, or something. yeah we could do a bonus if we needed to uh but a, a good note to to add um I actually went back in with tyler and we re-recorded every single instrument into this version so the the, the, the old demo now out. now t- Tyler, I got a question for you. Did do you only do drums, or did you do something else for this recording? Uh, on this recording, just drums. Hmm. But just drums, okay. I've done. I've, I've had. Do a you do anything that. else? Any any other time? Uh, um, and you mean in terms of the band? I I do have yeah, a lot. I mean, of do you do anything it. other than drums? Well, I do. I do play guitar, and I do play you bass do. as well. Yeah, and um. I didn't I realize definitely have that. a lot of inputs on the music, you know, just in terms of what is going or what needs to happen. Um, I think me and Tom are like pretty synced <laughs> up in terms of what needs to happen. Yeah. I tell you, they're like, we need to crash ride this. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm fucking singing. It's going to mud the mix. Goddamn, use the fucking. <laughs> yeah. The, the biggest fights in this band come between me and Tom and we're just listening to what we have and where we need to be. But I will say that doing the drums for the the ages, I could not be more proud of that song. It is so it's so incredible. I can't wait for people to hear it. Um, yeah, that's it's got big, something, it's, right? It, it does, it, man. Really, and, oh, that is just yeah, it makes it, my nuts warm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, again, I, I hate to toot my own horn here, but the, the song really has. It's got something. It's really it's got It's well something. deserved for you to toot your own horn with this one because uh, as long as we, we've been sitting on this thing, and I'm like, man, we have to get this out here. In some way, we have to do this. The new single really has this this deep passion and and powerful, almost anthem like sound to it. And I don't mind saying that because I really sincerely believe that this song has got something to it. In my opinion, this is like a top forty song, no, not in a bad way, like yeah. really a good way. No, I'm it, with it, you, even lyrically. Uh, nothing. For- thank you. Mm-hmm. Nothing commercial about it. It's very rock and roll. It's very dark gloom metal uh definitely in the realms or or in the veins i should say of typo negative and i'm very proud to be a part of it as well as being part of your releasing it through october nor mm-hmm. new hour new hour <laughs> we're gonna be here all night <laughs> <laughs> so um on that note why don't you explain a little bit about the song or talk a little bit more about the song tom and tell us uh, what you feel about it and then we'll get tyler will get your your opinion on it as well uh, for me it was uh it, and it just touches the damn soul like i was saying your lyrics especially uh i know when i'm writing music and songs uh the word flow is a big thing and making those fit into certain intervals of transitions or, or whatever's happening sound wise and just the way that you brought that one together, everything was just right in place. And, you know, the syllables and the flow of it. I don't know, man. It's just all incredible. I, 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 I just It has to be released. It has to be heard. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for those compliments. Absolutely. 
I, I, I sincerely agree with you about the song being on that, that I hate to say perfect, but on a level of uh, genius. Now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what I, I would say. Now I sound like Conway West. Uh, <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. I'm a musical I'm genius. Rest. <laughs> Anywho, Tyler, you want to chime in on this? Tell us what you think. Can you can yeah. you uh, can you tell us how great Tom and I sound on this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the drums as well. Uh, What's what oh, what? I'm a big fan of the drums as well. Oh. Okay. <laughs> No, the the song for me doesn't it doesn't feel like a song at all because it's not the this song is not structured as your normal industry would be it almost feels like a prose it almost feels it, it's a story it, it, is that so when I, when I listen to the song it, it's not it's not structured as a verse chorus verse chorus it's it's totally different from any song that I've ever heard it it doesn't follow the guidelines of the industry songs. So it almost feels like a story. Um, and that's the big thing that brought me in. So there's, so at the end of the song, there's a bridge and there's a release and then a build up and back in. It's, it's, it's different. It's, it's different than anything I've ever heard. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Cause it's, it's clocking in just under five minutes, but I remember, you know, just me having to sit on and work on it and then listen back to it. I was like, God, man, it's like, mm. it's something about it that wants you to make it, it makes you listen to it again and again and again. Yeah. Like it just grabs you. It's like, damn, I got to hear that again. Yeah. So, and yeah. most of the time I get sick you know, of fucking hearing the songs after all the mixing and <laughs> shit yeah. I have to do with it. I can't, I cannot wait to do the extended version of this song. <laughs> oh, there's an extended version. <laughs> That's well, news to me. <laughs> well, what, I, I think, I think it'll, I think it'll call for an extended version. We'll have to make it music. <laughs> oh, like the, the, the dance mix. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, the Conway West. <laughs> it's too bad we, it's too bad we can't take calls. Considering this is a pre-recorded show, uh, it's too bad we can't take calls. So more people could call in and praise us, <laughs> <laughs> or fucking hate us all. Together. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> so, um, you guys who are listening out there, you may have heard Tom uh, before because I have interviewed him or he's been interviewed as well as Tyler uh, on the Michael Deacon program, which is the other show that I am a co-host on. And uh, as I said before, I've known these guys and we've become friends. And, um, you know, to have them on the show is just, again, not simply to promote my stinky ass with the vocals that I did, <laughs> but to promote their band. And I'll tell you why. Because ultimately, having been a typo negative fan, um, when I first met Tom through the band that we were doing at the time, which was Momento Morte, mm -hmm. um, when I heard the band, I, I sincerely heard that typo negative sound to it. And I, being a fan of typo, I really kind of got into that. And I thought, wow, with Peter having died, maybe there's an opportunity for this band to, you know, pick up where Typo left off. So who knows? We'll see what happens mm -hmm. down That's the line. That's kind of the comments we band. do get. I, I, uh... I hope that they will get the recognition that they need. Yeah. Um, and on that note... Um, what am I missing here? I, I, I know you got the new album. You want to talk about the new album? Let's talk about Letters to Existence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we did the, uh, well, the Deja Vu. I think we lost him, Professor. Yeah, Deja Vu. Uh, we're working on the, oh, the next music video. Start again, start again, start again. Stop, 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 stop. From the top. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about, uh, let's, or I should say, let's talk a little bit more about Letters to Existence. Tell us about it, Tom. Uh, yeah, so it came out in September of 2023. So we're fresh into mm -hmm. this new one. Um, this one, it, it's really weird. So Fate, Wine, and Mysterio was kind of like a reach out to to the fan base or newcomers that were really finding this and discovering this and, and getting on board. And um, it, it was funny because when this one dropped, it seemed like it, it grabbed more industry attention. Um, so we started working with a, a PR person, Raquel, 
and she started getting into the right hand. So uh, this album actually made it into Metal Hammer's 2023 best album, top 10 best album or goth metal album. Really? Yes. That's that a was, magazine, right? That's yeah, a print magazine. huge publication over, overseas. Yeah. I was in um, I was in that magazine years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, we were very go on, go very on. impressed to have that. But it also uh, was enough to land me in uh, an endorsement with Dean Guitars. Um, Who guitars? Dean. D Dean D E A N. Yep. yep. Oh, okay. All yep. right. So uh, it's it's been really good. Like I said, it's just been more of an industry grab this time around. It's really kind of making some waves in that direction. Cool. So, um, you don't have any plans for a new album yet, just the single, correct? Right. I, th I think the only plans we really want to do is, you know, first of all, this single, but, uh, secondly, um, we're working on a cover of, uh, how soon is now from the Smiths. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, it's like my favorite song, song by the yes. Smiths. I heard one band do a cover of that, mm -hmm. of that song called. Oh, what the hell was their name? Something of Snakes. Hmm. Conspiracy of Snakes. Uh, I'm not familiar. Some, they, they were an underground uh, kind of band. They did two covers. One of them was the Smiths. Another one was a Cure song. Hmm. And I remember the Smiths song because that really stu stood out in my in my head after hearing it. It was very, done very heavy. Yeah. And I'm sure that's how you guys are going to do it, right? So it, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, I don't like to do direct re uh, replicas of, of an original song. Um, I like to try mm -hmm. and play with it a little bit more and see w what kind of other avenues we could take. Um, but at the same time, with this particular song, it's like, well, how far can we really go before it, it misses that real atmosphere that that song contains. So it's like, okay, we got to be able to retain that. Um, so I ended up doing like a little bit more of this darker industrial style backing sound for it. Um, so we're going to kind of follow there, but maybe I'm, I'm, I've been playing around with it and kind of maybe during the course or something, I could break off a little bit and kind of shoot it from left field and then pull back into it. Now, um, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about, the song the ages that you're gonna i'm a little confused what, what do you what's no no it's on who, how soon is now from the smiths my apologies no okay. you're good you're good <laughs> um go on so yeah we just want to kind of shoot in the left field for the course and then reel back into that real bread of a line that that, that song contains okay interesting so having said that let's talk about gigs Mm -hmm. Uh, if I remember correctly, you are playing April 21st yep. in, in New Jersey, mm -hmm. in Parsippany, New Jersey. Parsippany, that's right. For the Dark, dark Forces, Force. Dark Force Convention, yeah. correct? Right. Was most might call it Dork Force. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, that is a gothic convention that takes place in new jersey <clears throat> and um i believe there are three nights of bands friday saturday and sunday right correct you are playing on yeah we're on sunday on sunday yeah and what's your time slot for that 4 p.m 4 p.m yeah all right guys so they're playing 4 p.m if anybody's going if you're you're listening to this and you're within uh I should say listening range, like particularly in New Jersey, New York, mm -hmm. or even Pennsylvania, the gig in New Jersey on the 21st, uh, you'd have to get tickets. I think you have to get them in advance. Do you not? Um, I don't think so. I think you get them at the door, but I know you can okay. do like day tickets or you could do full, yeah. full thing. You can get tickets for the entire weekend. And it, I'm sure there's a lot of things going on. Vendors, band and it's it's mostly a convention of everything music merchandise products and things of that nature so you can get uh you know you can get like a three-day ticket if you want if they still have them mm -hmm. and if i'm correct there is a hotel that so i know this sold out because uh, it's in a hotel uh right. the, the sheraton castle hotel but they're sold out of rooms like they are they've been shot <laughs> so uh, there yeah, are looking, other places people if you right. do decide you want to go maybe the hotel might be sold out but you can stay in other places mm -hmm. nevertheless um 
what was I going to say? Um, are there any other, excuse me, oh, that wine, um, any other gigs coming up? Yeah, we've, uh, I know right at, well, right after Persephone, we're going to be in Birmingham, Alabama at the Nick, uh, the following weekend or following Friday. Uh, and then we'll shoot into Fort Walton but, at the downtown music hall. Go ahead. But no other, no other gigs within New Jersey, right? No, no, that's it. We're shooting up there and then coming home. Okay. All right. Um, if people want to contact you guys or look into what you, uh, what the band's all about, mm-hmm. octobernor.com. Um, currently it's right? dot org. We are actually in dot the process. Of, okay. Yeah, we're in the process of building the dot com right now. We do have the domain ID. Um, uh, we got another guy working on that. So that's going to be in the next couple of months or so at most, we'll have that one ready to launch. Um, but then socials, you got Facebook cool. and, uh, All right. Instagram and YouTube, Spotify, blah, 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 blah. And uh, if they want to um, get your merchandise, I'm assuming it's through the website, or yep. do you have to go to like Spotify, or no. how would that work? Yeah, you could do it through OctoberNoir.org. I don't like uh, using other places most times to sell merchandise because they t- typically they charge a percentage, even though they're not touching a fucking thing. We're just hosting it there, so I'd rather just send it to the website. Mm. Okay, so uh, you heard it, people. October Noor and Noor is spelled N O I R. We'll put the uh, the website up at the end of the show or during whatever uh, whatever Professor Z decides to do, uh, so that you guys can see it. Um, I believe you have a, a Facebook page as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, this is October Noor and music. What would that be? Yeah, uh, you can look up October we'll Noor also, on Facebook. We'll also put. Yep. Okay. And uh, what about merchandise and stuff? Same situation? Uh, yeah, the merchandise. Like t-shirts and all that jazz? Yep, T-shirts, CDs. We've got wristbands. We've got, uh, I, I know, I think we still have some of those uh, handwritten lyric sheets. So I actually went and bought parchment paper with uh, a quill pen and ink and allowed people. We did it as like a promo for the, the newest album. But um, I'll handwrite the lyrics to whatever song of choice. And then uh, it gets... Uh, wax stamp uh, stamped and sealed inside of a envelope so i actually bought one of those custom really? seals yeah little stamp seal stamps or whatever with the, the you band. know i had actually considered doing something like that um somebody told me you know if you hand write the lyrics mm-hmm. uh on a nice piece of parchment you can um sell them my problem is um i never see myself as being so famous and popular that i could release things of that nature well that was kind of my thing too with it Um, i have a real complex (laughs) yeah no no, i'm right there with you um because i was like yeah who the fuck am i you know sit here who's gonna pay for this shit you know because it's like 30 dollars now that's what i I say yeah but people bought it (laughs) i think it was like 100 sheets and i got about 30 left really so so you're uh, you're selling your wait. You're selling handwritten lyrics on a parchment for thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, and I, I, it was only going to be a hundred of them. That was going to be the. That's it. That's all you're getting. That's all I'm doing. It's too much work. Blah blah. And yeah, there's about thirty of them left. So I really need to get my gears, my ass in gear. I should say. <laughs> yeah. um, it was weird, like man. It. Like I just tried to threw it out there. <laughs> Yeah, somebody told me a while back, I think it was my old guitar player, Fred, mm-hmm. who said to me, hey, man, you should do, I saw some guys, like, writing lyrics on a, on a piece of paper and selling them. Yeah. I'm like, ah, who the hell would want anything, like, written by me? You would be surprised. <laughs> you <laughs> crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, listen, um... Am I forgetting anything? Do you want to talk about anything else here? Am I missing uh, something? Did yeah, you- so I was going to say, you know, I know we just did our newest music video, which was uh, Halo Hung from Horns. Uh, but we are now going into production for the newest one, Deja View, which is from the newest album. Um, so, Deja Mike, did you see View. the last video? A Halo Hung from Horns? Did you ever see that one? Uh, the Possessed I Nun? Yeah, recall. 
No. Oh, oh you'd get a kick I didn't out of see that, that one. one. So I love possessed nuns. Yeah, so it was like this Evil Dead <laughs> mixed in with like The Exorcist, and it's just complete. Oh boy! Yeah, but it's total comedy. Like we just, you know, we did shit to make fun of ourselves. We did shit to make fun of like uh, old production. Like we had the puke scene, um, and like the, <laughs> it's not like a spray that comes out. It's literally a fucking hose, and it just looks like this, this tubular fucking thing. I mean, it just looks cheap as shit, but. It was, the whole point of the video was to make fun of ourselves and not take ourselves too seriously. Uh, but one particular happening is when Doug picks up the nun's Bible and opens it. And there's a uh, the cover album picture photo of the playgirl from Peter Steele. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, that's how she got possessed. She's carrying around this thing in her right. Bible. Okay, so I got to tell you a story. <laughs> in in all right, we're, we're going to talk about Pete Steele's picture in Playgirl. All right, so in nineteen ninety, I think it was ninety five, mm-hmm. uh, which is around the time when when uh, Peter Steele had done a a spread, if you will, mm-hmm. for Playgirl magazine. All right. And uh, I mean, he had, you know, he had his wang out and everything. So we we did this we did this gig. Empire Hideous did a gig in New York City, uh, and I'm happy to say we had a sold out crowd. It was really a great night, and uh, I did a little fun. I had a little fun in the middle of the show, and uh, we were talking about how we were playing the gig. Uh, I was talking about how we were playing the gig, and. It's not a big club. It's uh, in fact, it was a little bit smaller than CBGB's. If if, mm-hmm. if that gives you an idea of yep. what size was it was. So, um, I'm on stage, and I had a friend of mine, th- this girl who was a publicist th- at the time, Michelle. Again, big typo negative fan. Uh, so her cue is when, when I was doing the, the the conversation about how glad we were to play at the club and so on and so forth. I made a little comment about we were getting so famous and doing so well. And she gave me the magazine. And I held up the magazine of Peter Steele in the spread, you know, where the, the, the fold out, <laughs> but it had my face on it. <laughs> I, put my, <laughs> I put my face over Peter Steele's face. And I, I said something like, you see, I'm doing so well. And here we are playing this fucking club. <laughs> so there you go. A little, That's I always brilliant. have to throw it. I always have to throw a little story in about Empire Hideous somehow <laughs> yeah. in association, whatever what we're ever discussing. No, I, uh, I love hearing event. your stories regardless, man. So it's, it's always good. <laughs> um, all right. So you were saying Pete Steele's picture with his heart on <laughs> yeah. is in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was like another little toss at it. And then uh, I know Doug had the idea from Monty Python where the, the monks are walking through and they're smacking their heads with, oh, uh, with the books. Whack. Yeah, so he's doing that. And, uh, we oh, just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so we just, uh, man, we, we did so many little so things like that. You did that as well? You did something yeah. like that, a skit like that? Oh, my God. Yeah, Doug's doing that as he's walking. Me, yeah, because he's, he's dressed up as the monk. Um, but, yeah, we just wanted to have that fun with the man. That is hilarious, which reminds me. I got another question I want to ask you. But yeah. uh, let's carry on. Um, bear with me a moment as mm-hmm. we take notes. So you got a new video. Is it out yet? It is out. No. So that one's out. Yeah. But uh, we, we're about to start shooting this newest one. Um, so we've, we've got so all like. I'm, as, I'm assuming. I'm assuming you have a YouTube channel yeah. or page or whatever you call it. Account where people can see all your music videos. Yes? Correct. Yep. All right. So. Um, what is that? Uh, what is that uh, address? It's uh, youtube.com slash October Noir. Radio show. Yeah, I'm used to I'm used to Tom stealing it away from me. I just kind of let him go when he's flowing. But... Well, you know how it is. Lead singer yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, lead singer syndrome. <laughs> I'm talking to two of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, are you in for it. Oh, I know. I've been in, I've been <laughs> in for years. No, the, the only thing that I have besides October Noir – um, it's just the noir hour. It's on YouTube. I, every now and then I'll take a little time and link up with some 
famous friends that I know and some famous people and people that are just very interesting to the music scene. Uh, there is an interview with myself and Mike Hideous on the Noir Hour that was done quite a while ago. And uh, has, it that, has it been that long? How long it has is, it been? It has been a while, yeah. It, it's it's crazy. Years, how, right? Yeah, it, it is crazy. It is so crazy to me how time flies. And every time I look at the calendar, I think about it. Like, how, how long have I known Mike Hideous? Uh, it, it's been a while. <laughs> and uh, Too long. Yeah, there, there is an interview on there. The Noir Hour at YouTube with me and Mike, and uh, I've done some I've done some pretty big interviews. That I'm very proud of uh, Gas Lipstick from the band Him and Christopher Dahman from Dahman. Um, I did the first interview with William Control, and I don't think he's done any since. Um, it's, it's you got mention mention of, who these people are. Mention who these people are. Say like such yeah, and yeah, such yeah. from such and such band. Yeah, Ga- yeah, Gas Lipstick. He was a drummer from him, uh, which is a huge band for me. It's my all time number one. And Christopher Dahman, he's the lead singer of Dahman. Um, hu- huge band in the goth rock scene. I did uh, I did an interview with a band called, uh, with a guy, from, his name's Dustin Lowry from The Becoming, which was a huge band in that whole 2009, 2010 goth metal breakout. Um, just, just it's just a side thing that I do, uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. And you can find a lot of good stuff on there, so I suggest you check that out. But definitely check out our cool. YouTube page at October Noir, and keep in touch with us. Uh, we, if you ever cool. reach out, we're always there. Somebody will always get back to you. Good. Okay. Good to hear. Thank you very much for appreciate appreciate that, Tyler. Um, and on that note. Tom, one more time. Am mm-hmm. I am I missing anything? Did did, did you want to mention anything? Uh, yeah, we uh, just about. we got a new music video coming out. Deja Vu, and we're gonna take it back into the more darker realm. So this is gonna be the uh, the vampire stuff where I bomb to suck your dick. So <laughs> that ain't vampire, man. I got <laughs> that's another. That's a whole other genre right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll it'll make it pretty big in the uh, porno industry, I think. Oh, it'll uh, make it pretty big, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're gonna we we get been getting all the prop stuff together. We're actually headed down to Tampa this weekend. Uh, we're gonna start filming. Playing a gig down there? Uh, no, nope, we're gonna start filming, and then uh, I've got to go buy Dean guitars and and talk with Chris, and but buy him dinner, I guess, and uh, walk out of there with some kind of a guitar. That's wonderful. So, uh, uh, speaking so- of. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rosa Guitars, Matt Markle. Yeah, what about him? He's about to be shipping my bass out. Well, good for you. I'm so, glad alleged. to hear that. Yeah, so you should What'd be... What did you say, Tyler? Allegedly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you should be next in line, I think, to, to have I, yours. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, uh, you guys out there don't know what we're talking about, but <clears throat> um, <laughs> we were... Um, we know a guy by the name of Matt Matthew, uh, who makes these beautiful guitars. Um, Tom is supposed to be getting his, and and I was supposed to have my artwork on at least two of them. Um, in which, um, hold on, sorry, cat. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to have my artwork on two of them. Uh, sadly, uh, that has not come to fruition yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that something happens in the future because uh, I'd like to see my art on some of these 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 guitars. I, I was even going to sell them on my site. Um, but again, uh, until I hear from Matt, I, I, don't, I don't really know what's going on. So I'm not going to get into that subject. So uh, good luck on that. I hope you get your your guitar. I'll let you know how it is. Or your bass, yeah. and uh, that's a custom custom made yeah. bass, right? Yeah, full full custom. So uh, it's really funny. I, he didn't charge you at all, did he? He just he's like well, no, his, I, and then it'll be a commission thing. Yeah, it was going to be my artwork that I sent to yeah. him <clears throat> that he was going to put on whatever yeah. uh, models that he makes. Yeah, and then from there, I As was going saw. to have them available to purchase on my website so that yeah. if anybody wanted a guitar with my artwork on it, they well, could have it. You're lucky. Cause uh, it cost me $3,400 and uh, I paid him and I said, you know, f- for the price of this thing, it better suck my dick. 
<laughs> and uh, so he drilled a, a nice little hole in the back of the body and an insert here around it. So uh, <laughs> it's completely custom. <laughs> As I almost choked to death <laughs> on that very. I'll send you the comment. photo, Mike. <laughs> Does it really say that it, on the back? Yes, yes. That's Insert hilarious. <laughs> That's really <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you're finally getting uh, your guitar. Yeah. And um, and that's that. Um, anything else, boys? I'm set from here, unless you got All anything. Right. I think that's about it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have been speaking with Tom Noir and Tyler Fleming of October Noir uh band based out of florida uh and if you like bands like uh you know that dark gothic rock mm -hmm. kind of metal and if you're a lover of typo negative you will definitely find this band to be in that realm and and i'm i guarantee you you'll like them as long as you're not the kind of person who's gonna say well they sound too much like typo negative <laughs> just because of that i don't like them yeah we've but had those types too <laughs> just the opposite i feel that if you like typo negative and you know you, you were a fan of that style of music and the band itself i feel that you will like october noir because in my opinion it picks up on where typo yeah. negative it's a hell of a compliment there you go, folks. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you, I Mike. I sincerely appreciate your coming on the show, um, knowing that this is a, a basically a brand new show. Wait, quick. When do we get into politics? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep, for, for the interviews that I do with musicians and bands and yeah. or entertainers, I, and this has been all my life, ever since I was yep. a journalist, you know, as far back as in the 90s. I never got into politics or political conversations with bands because, yep. because I know, like, you know, I'm not even going to get into it much, but politics is a very, very delicate situation with a lot of musicians and, and right. bands. And, and a lot of them tend to be left. Yep. And, and that's okay. Yeah. It's when I think it's when you're woke that I tend to have a problem with it. Yeah. I don't care if you're if you're a left uh, a leftist or or, or 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 I should say a Democrat. Um, as much as I don't remind I mind if you're a Republican, um, I just I tend not to bring up those types of questions or subjects or topics mm -hmm. to any musician, entertainer, singer, whatever. Uh, only because I just don't want to. A, put them on the spot, or B, have a confrontation with them. And that's always been my rule of thumb. We don't talk politics, um, mainly because, you know, we're here to entertain. And uh, the worst thing that I fucking can't stand is seeing another band talking politics when they're on stage. Just shut the fuck up and play your music. Oh, you know? especially when you're on stage. Right. Yeah. So we're all here to to get away from the bullshit nonsense that's going on mm -hmm. in the world of today. And let's, yeah, that's how we treat it. Keep it that way. And, and you know, not for nothing, when I used to do music with Empire Hideous, uh, Hideous was always about opening the doors and finding what's behind those doors of politics, religion, mm -hmm. um, and just basic morals and, and standards, things that were taboo mm -hmm. that we you didn't hear much about. Um, I always tried to open the door on those topics. Mm -hmm. And in some cases... I don't think I, you could say I got political, but at the same time, when I used to write things on my chest, like, you know, fuck the media, fuck religion. Yeah. I, that, I mean, that was a political statement, but I didn't get mm -hmm. up there and preach. Right. Um, right. So again, I, I just, I've always kept politics out of my interviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that I'm doing interviews again, as a, uh, I can't say a journalist, but uh, now that I'm interviewing bands and uh, people of, of certain status, I, I, I still tend to keep it where it's about the, the interview interviewee. I think it was, mm -hmm. you guys are the interviewee. I'm the interviewer. The uh, way this is going, I'm the plaintiff and you're the defendant. <laughs> <laughs> so I always try to keep it out of that. <laughs> 
Hey, you know what? You know what? Fuck ending the show. I want to ask you a couple more questions real quick. Yeah. Aside from the Gary Newman show, what would you say are is 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 maybe one of the most memorable moments on stage with the band? Is there anything in particular that ever has ever stood out from the other gigs that you've played? Something that has happened that you find unique, whether it was on stage, behind stage, backstage, before you went on show? after the show whatever. yeah uh i think for me it was it was club la um i believe we were opening for the death leopard tribute band that night where was this uh this is in destin florida the huge venue called club la this is their big premiere one where all the major bands go okay uh, but they had a Def leopard tribute band opening that night and we happened to get on it um and just it was weird because we were we had our fan base there, but we also had a lot of people there that only knew Def Leppard or you know that kind of music, and most of them were older people and stuff. Um, but they they saw us for the first time. But the compliments and just the crowd reaction I was seeing after each song, it really stood out to me that all right, what would we've got something good here? Like if people that have no fucking idea who we are, are are coming out to see a Def Leppard tribute and they're fucking loving us. That's great. Um, so yeah, that was, that was probably one of my most memorable outside of, uh, this one may be better. Uh, when we played Long Island, New York back in September at, um, uh, what was the name of uh, 89 North and the, the fucking, the booking guy had us on the, on the whole list and he built out the show flyer and blah, blah, blah. But he has like a typo negative tribute. And I, and I, I told him, I was like, we're not a tribute band. And, but the show had to go on. He was nervous as fuck. He was like, Oh, Oh, you, you guys are playing originals tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but we'll do a typo cover. You know, we'll do a couple. Of them. Um, so man, we played that set. And I think, I think one of the last songs we did was love you to death. The cover. And I looked out, and there was probably three or four people I could see immediately bawling their eyes out crying. Oh, wow. And just hearing it. And I was like, holy shit, man. And uh, that was probably the most touching moment that, that I've had on a stage. I was going to say, that must have really hit you hard, huh? It, it, was, it was weird. It was just weird. I was like, man, people are fucking losing their, their minds over this. It's like, okay, well, this, this is good. Um, but that was the first time we'd ever been there, played there in New York, and just the traction that it picked up to have us there that night—it was, it was fucking incredible. That's amazing. So, Tyler, anything uh, with you you want to mention? Yeah, I mean, you know, to to go off of some of the things that Tom had talked about, I mean, those those shows were incredible. Uh, the the biggest show, well, the most impactful moment of. My, I think my stint in this band has been in a little club in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, <laughs> we, I know, man. It, we, the band had been through some turmoil, and we were kind of uncertain about the direction mm-hmm. moving forward. And we had, and we had written a song called "Endless Lonely," and that kind of, that was kind of the song that put the wheels back in motion for the band. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Um, if it would have not have been for that song and how powerful it was, I don't think that we would be here today. It was just something about it. And, um, we played that song live and that was, and the show was not very organized, but <laughs> to, to go. So we had, we had our whole set recorded professionally and it from some, from a guy that was, that was there recording and, and I listened back to that on YouTube and man, I just bawled my eyes out like at this computer, listening back to our little shitty band doing this song that <laughs> meant so much to us, you know? And, and which, which song was it that you played that, that, uh, got you emotional? It's called endless lonely. Okay. And it that's was, your song, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was the very first time that we'd ever played it live. And I, we had, you know, we had listened to it a bunch and, mode over it in recording and the really the the future of the band was kind of uncertain at that point and when i listened back to that it just it broke me down i'm like well 
there's something special here. And that was the first single off of our last album that we did. So we've had some incredible shows, but that was the one that it just, that one song, that one live performance is what struck me probably the most out of the entire time I've been in this band. Uh, there was so much behind the scenes that went into what that song was and what the album became that it's on. So I don't really think about that a whole lot, but in thinking about when you asked Tom, I knew that that was coming up for me. So that's, that's definitely my answer. All right. And you can check that out on YouTube. It's endless lonely at the Merry widow. You've heard it folks. I've always said that music has the ability to bring out feelings, emotions, memories, and especially when it's a song that can truly reach into your soul and and pull out those memories, whether they're good or bad. Um, I know for me, uh, I I can I get that kind of feeling all the time, and, and and it's weird. The older I get, the more nostalgic I become, and you guys will find that too when you get. I'm to already there with you, Mike. <laughs> so uh, again, when you have a, a piece that can bring out such a a, an emotion from a person i think that's when you know you have a song that can uh how could i say that not not that it's a a success well maybe yeah it maybe it's a success it's a it's a piece that has gotten to people it has reached Mm -hmm. people um so yeah i've always felt that way about music uh, and there are a lot of songs from other bands that I listen to that have truly um, reached right down into my my soul or right down into my heart. And and it depending on the song that I'm listening to, they've it's either crushed my heart or filled it full of blood. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, it, 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 that's it's that's how I know. feel about the ages. Do you know? Yes. I'm telling you that that song, there was I, I something ha- in that song. I have to admit, I, I kind of agree with you mm-hmm. on that. And I don't mean to sound egotistical or, or, or conceited in any way. But folks, when you hear this song, and some of you may have already heard it on my, on my uh, uh, you know, MikeHideous.com uh, as a free download. But when you hear the remake of this song, re-recorded, all the instruments are re-recorded, mixed and mastered professionally, uh, you're going to hear the the how would I say the the magic mm-hmm. of this song and how it really uh, well it makes me feel like uh, when I listen to it I really get into it I I, I can mm-hmm. really and it's not my lyrics it's the music itself that I've always found mm-hmm. to be. Uh, something that grabs me and pulls me in that's what moves um, your lyrics uh, yeah I, I guess you can say that mm-hmm. i guess you can say that like i when i wrote the lyrics i wrote it based on what i was listening to the the music mm-hmm. uh and then of course you know fit it into the the verse and the chorus and so forth uh but I, you know i'm not trying to toot my own horn and, and brag about myself what i am saying is that the song which the music which was not written by myself has something about it it has something about it that uh i sincerely believe will grab from others like it grabbed from me their heart their soul their emotions and uh well i guess we can only wait and see when it it comes out i'm very anxious i really am to see how the people are going to respond so and and again it's 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 got my artwork on it so Mm -hmm. i'm i'm honored to have have that privilege. Um, yeah, I had to make sure that was the case. <laughs> Did you now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, Mike, give me your work. <laughs> well, thank you. I sincerely appreciate that. And on that note, I think now we can end the show. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I want to say thank you very much to Tyler and Tom, who have uh, been gracious enough to come on this show and uh, do the interview with me. I really appreciate it. No, Don't forget, it's been folks. great being here. Um, thank you. Um, don't forget folks, go to their website, uh, 
check out their videos again we'll be posting all that so you can see it and that's about it um thank you guys i really appreciate you coming on yep thank so, you man to just be here Hey folks, thanks for listening to Finding the Truth with Mike Hideous. Listen, don't forget to check out all my Hideous merchandise, including t-shirts, blankets, hoodies, CDs, and my book, King of an Empire to the Shoes of a Misfit. It's all available only at MikeHideous.com. And don't forget, that's Mike with a Y, M-Y-K-E, MikeHideous.com. Hey folks, um, once again, I just want to say thank you for listening to the show tonight. Um, on another note, I would like to dedicate tonight's show to a friend of mine who passed away today on the 18th of March. His name was Brian Moore. He was a friend. He was a really good guy. He was a veteran of the Navy, and he was a hideous fan. He, he, he was a big Empire hideous fan as well as a fan of all my, my efforts. Sadly, Brian was found deceased in his apartment today, and uh, I was contacted by his roommate who told me what happened, and um, I was pretty shocked. He, was, he, he had a lot of health issues, but I never expected him to go when he did. He was a young man, uh, and I, I'm going to miss him. He was a really good guy, and uh, my heart goes out to his family for having lost him at such a young age. I want to thank him for being for serving this country and uh and that's pretty much it so once again rest in peace brian you were a good guy and uh i already miss you thank you all right folks uh thanks very much for listening tonight um i want to thank uh Tom and Tyler from October Noir, uh, the great rock and roll heavy metal band from um, Florida. Uh, and again, if you like typo negative or just dark, gloomy metal, you are going to love October Noir. Noir. Sorry, I keep saying it wrong all night. In any event, I want to say thank you to my co-host, my uh, colleague, my producer, my engineer, Professor Z. 
for doing everything that he does to make this show run uh, smoothly. Uh, who, if I didn't have him doing what he does, this show would not be happening. So thank you to Professor Z. Thank you all for listening. Um, I hope you will subscribe to our show, uh, like, and um, and share it with other people. Uh, on that note, if you're interested also, check out my book, King of an Empire, The Shoes of a Misfit. There are some copies left. You can only get it on MikeHideous.com. And uh, on that note, once again, thank you for listening to Finding the Truth with Mike Hideous. That would be me, your host, Mike Hideous. <laughs>